Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I hope that you are enjoying the worship service this morning. I praise to God that we are here today, despite the cold weather. I am happy to see again Sister Beth. We were praying for her. She's back. Welcome back. Uh, I am uh, happy also to um, hear Sister Elia's voice today. <laughs> she was really sick last week, and I can I can feel her because I was the same too. And today, let's pray for Brother Dimola. He's sick, and Pastor Bias is also sick. So pray for them. Let's pray for all the people who are sick, so God will bring uh, His healing power to each and one of them. And uh, you know, this weather is changing so much. Yesterday was like, in the morning was like what? 20 something. And today was the same also in the morning, and tomorrow we're going to be up to the 70s. So it's, it's kind of crazy. It's up and down, up and down. So be careful. I praise God because we are in the 40 days of prayer. And I hope that you are following the book, and also I hope that your prayer experience is growing each and every day. As we read this book, I praise God for the 10 days of prayer. It was ended last week, and we will continue with the 40 days of prayer until February 9th. So please follow the book, the reading, and as Brian said, if you don't have it with you, you can do the download version. Um, today we are going to study something that is really important. As we are talking about prayer, prayer is walking with God. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, you know that the Bible does not say what people think. And the Bible does not mean what people say. The Bible say and think what God say and think. When you look into the life you see that in order for you to walk with somebody, you need to know that somebody. If you don't know that somebody, because nobody wants to walk with a stranger, why? Well, first of all, it's weird. Right? You're working with a stranger. And second of all, it's boring. I remember I was traveling, it was an eight, eight hour flight. And they put somebody next to me, it was an old lady, and they would tell you it was boring. The reason why, I, was, I had a book and I was reading, and I was praying and all that, I was trying to preach to that lady, but when I was talking to her, she just answered yes or no. She was not having a conversation with me, and it was boring. And the thing is, I was in the window, she was next to me, so I couldn't talk to anybody else. So I was trying to make a conversation, and it was really long, really, really, really long. But when you walk with somebody that you don't know, it's also difficult to express words and even to talk about yourself because you don't trust this person. But, praise the Lord, when you know this person, when you love this person, when you trust this person, you can walk and walk and you can talk and talk and times flies, right? Remember, let me look at those faces. Remember when you were in love with your... Remember? I mean, in my time, we used the phone. I don't know in yours. But I remember, you know, when you get the phone and you start talking and talking, and sometimes you even want to, you call and you hang up and you want to call again, right? Yes or no? Yes or no? And then you start, hang up. No, you hang up. No, hang up. No, you hang up. No. Right? And then you call and call and you talk and talk and talk. I remember my mom telling me, hang up that phone. Not to me, my brother, okay? Not to me, my brother. It's been two hours and you're still on the phone. Hang up. And the same thing happened today. Praise the Lord that they invented something that is called unlimited on the phone. <laughs> Praise God, because if not, the bill, the phone bill will be really, really high. So you know when you you can you can uh, spend hours and hours and you don't even know it is when you know this person. When you know this person, when you study the Bible, you see that there is some things that happen 
to the person that walk with God. Based on some things that happen. And you see that prayer is talking to God, is talking with God, and is opening your life, yourself, to Him, to God. And something that happened is this. When you walk with God, prayer is not an event. It's a what? It's a what? Lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Prayer becomes a two-way communication. Amen. Amen. It's not just to talking. You talk and He answers back. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that in your life? Yes or no? Yes. If you haven't, then you need to review your prayer life. Because when you walk with Him, you talk to Him and He talks to you. He sometimes wakes you up in the morning, early in the morning, because He wants to have a quality time with you. Sometimes when you are angry or something happens, He says, don't say anything, just listen, don't do this, don't do that, keep that away from you, go this way, go that way, go to my work, come and talk with me, let's have a, a relationship. He talked to you, and you can feel it, because it's, it's a relationship with God. Right? You have to know. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And listen to this. When you walk with God, it's not just an event that it's not that you come to Him to ask for health and then you pray just to ask for a new job and you pray to ask for a better job or you pray to ask for more money or you pray to, to for something to happen. No, it's something that is happening in you because you have a communication with your God. With your loving God. Right? Like for example, don't tell me that you can afford to live with somebody in your house and not talk to that person. Can you afford that? It's like I am living with my wife. We talk a lot. And the more the time passes, you know that it's better for you to have a good communication with your partner because if not, your life will be over. Yeah. Can you imagine living with somebody just with a face? <laughs> you are not living with that person. Maybe you are sharing the same room. But if you are living with this person, if you are walking with this person, I can guarantee that you will have a communication with this person. And if you are walking with God, you have a communication with Him, and that means prayer. That means prayer. It's not just something that you close your eyes and then you go on your knees because you are going to eat breakfast. It's not that you close your eyes and you go and pray because you're going to have lunch. It's not that you close your eyes because you're going to have dinner. It's not that you close your eyes because you're going to sleep. It's not that you close your eyes because it's prayer time in the worship service. No. It's that every time, every day, during the day, you are talking with Him. You are walking with Him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We have become used to getting things done quickly. Yes or no? Yes. yes. And efficiently, right? Yes or no? I remember in my time, in my time, if I asked my mom, I want mashed potato, I remember she used to clean the potato, put it in water, wait for 30 or 40 minutes to the potato to be and then put some water to cover it off and then to start smashing the mashed potato and two hours later I had the mashed potato and I have to use to eat it slowly because hey two hours work but now you go to the market you go to the supermarket and have a box and in 15 minutes you have your mashed potato or less five minutes you put it in the microwave, and some people are like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And the kids are like, we want everything done quickly and efficiently. We set clock to turn on the oven. Do you remember those days in the Philippines that you had to put your... Put some woods and start... Now we have a clock in the oven to turn it on. We set thermostat that automatically keeps us warm or cold. Wow. Wow. I remember in my, in my house, close the window, 
<laughs> and we had to do something called, you know. In our cars, we use cruise control. And even more amazing, commercial airliners have a computerized automatic pilot that can actually fly the plane. However, this mentally of setting the timer, letting the computer do the job, or just pushing a button can very easily creep into our spiritual life, especially in our prayer life. Amen? Sometimes we pray and we want God to answer right away. And if he doesn't answer a minute later, or five minutes later, or two minutes later, or a day later, we stop praying or we stop believing in God. It's a relationship depending on what you're going to do to me or for me. Prayer can easily become mechanical and almost what? If we are not careful. Let me ask you a question. For men, when you put your shoes off, on, do you think about it? No. Yes or no? You just put them on. Mm -hmm. And you just go. Sometimes we pray the same way. We don't even think. It's automatically. We pray, boom, that's it. And I remember telling my brother, we used to tell that to each other. But I remember telling my brother, it's like sending a fax to God. Boom. You know everything. That's it. That is not communication. That is not a relationship. That is not walking with God. Now, there is some characteristic of those who prayer life are so intense that they start walking with God and invite God to be part of their life. Because when you walk with Him, your life is not the same. It's not the same. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 18 and 19 says, can, we, can you read it there? Yes? And the Lord has what? This day to be His what? So He's calling us that we are His what? Peculiar people. We are not, we are peculiar for Him. As He hath promised thee, and that thou shalt keep all His commandments, and to make thee high what? Above all nations. He is calling us to be his peculiar people, to be above all nations, which he has made in praise and in name and in honor, and thou mightest be holy. What? People. Holy what? People. Do you know that you are holy? Do you know that that when he see you, he don't see a sinner, he see a holy person. Amen. He sees somebody that he sent his son to die for you. You are holy for him. You are peculiar for him. So please don't tell me that God has declared that we are his peculiar people to make us high above all nations in praise, in honor, and to be a holy people to have a distant relationship with us. Don't tell me that. I can't believe, and I refuse to believe, that He is calling us, a peculiar people, to be, to have a distant relationship with us. I don't believe that. I think that He is calling, and the reason that He is calling us that way is because He wants to live with us, He wants to live in us, and He wants to communicate with us, and He wants to walk with us every single day. Amen? Amen? Don't you think that? We are special for Him. And He wants to walk with us. It is impossible to walk with God and to be the same person. It is impossible. Amen? It is impossible. Because when you walk with Him, when you talk to Him, when you pray to Him, when you surrender everything to Him, your life will be a life full of power. 
But not human power. It's a holy power. Because the way you used to think is not with you anymore. The way you used to talk is not with you anymore. Now you are a new creation in Jesus Christ. It is impossible to walk with God. And those who know you and those who are around you don't change. It is impossible. Because that's why when your co-worker, when your family see that you are a new person, they want to be like Thank you. you. But not like you, like him who is in you. <laughs> like that person who is walking with you. So, it is impossible for us to be walking with him and be the same person. And that's why prayer is really important. That's why it's really important. Let's go and see Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. First, this is the first characteristic that you can see in a man who walked with him. These are the, gener the generation of Noah. Noah was a what? Just what? And look at the details. He's a just man. He's not just just. He's a just man like you and me. With doubts, with difficulties. He's a man, but he's just. And why? And he's perfect in his generation. And you know why he's perfect? And you know why he's just? Because he walked with who? With God. With God. If you see the way the, the Bible is written, you will see that the meaning of whatever is come before is at the end. And this is why he is a just man and he is perfect in his generation because he was walking with God. And that means that if you and I walk with God, that means that you and I talk to who? To him. Walking means why don't we be together all the time? Why don't we talk to each other all the time? Prayer life. Prayer life. Prayer is the key to grow what? To grow what? Spiritually. Let's see what the Apostle Paul had to say about this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. He said, Brethren, be not children in what? In understanding. And what did it say? A bit in malice, be ye children, but in understanding be what? Be men. He's saying, grow up. We need to grow. We need to grow spiritually. And growing spiritually means that you and I understand that we are walking with the Almighty God. This is not a game. This is something serious. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 and 2. And this was our scripture reading. Scripture reading. By the way, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I was reading something very interesting. How is possible that somebody that is 20 years old has a big head as a 20 years old man and the body of a 2 years old man? Can you imagine that? Is that possible? To have a big head and a small body? Do you think it's possible? Hmm. Well, can you imagine? I, I was reading something that is really important. It said that you grow in proportion to the time that you spend with God. That means that if you, you know, <laughs> I was reading a story that said that this lady was looking at the newspaper. And there was an ad. We're looking for experienced teachers. So this lady went to the interview. And the man who was interviewing her said, okay, how long, I mean, tell me about your experience. I have 20 years of experience. I said, whoa, you are the person we're looking for. Can you show me your resume? Can you show me your, you know, your work and your, your, um, your plan and everything? And she said, oh yeah, of course. So she opened uh, something and he showed a book that it was 20 years old. And he said, this is the material that I've been using for 20 years. And the man told this lady, man, I'm so sorry to tell you, 
that you don't have 20 years of experience. You maybe have one year's experience and you repeated it 10, 20 years. And sometimes that happened to us. Maybe we were in love with Jesus the first year and when they repeated and repeated again. Do you think that doing the same thing, you will have different results? I don't think so. And if we know that prayer is really important for our spiritual life, and we just pray, and we just pray because we have to go to bed, because just, I mean, our prayer life is not so strong, and we think that we're going to be a growing and growing spiritually, I don't think so. So our spiritual life needs to grow in proportion on the time that we spend with him. With him. And I see something here. And when Abraham was, how, how, how? he was what? Let me see the hands of those who are 60 years old. 60. Do we have anybody 70? 70? 80? More than 80? 80 and above? 90? Okay, 70? 80? Who? Your grandma? Where's your grandma? Grandma have 83. Praise the Lord. Grandma, there is a lot of things that you still need to do for Jesus. Because Abraham was 90 years old and 9. And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and thou and be what? Thou perfect. Praise the Lord. And look what happened in verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and who? And thee. And I will what? Multiply what? Can you believe that? Abraham was what? Without children. And what happened after that? So, Grandma, if you're an 80 something, God has something for you. So. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I see some people, I, I'm done, I'm, I'm 60, I'm done. I'm, I see for you, I'm, you're not done. You're not done. If you are in earth, if you are not in heaven, and you are still here, God has something for you. So, be ready. Number two. This is something that happened for those who have a, who work with God. And let's go to the Bible in Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. 32, 32. And it said, verse 1, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, the people gathered themselves together into a run and said unto him, Make us what? Gods. Which shall go before us. For us, for this Moses, the man that brought, up, brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. Let me ask you a question. Who was the one who brought them out of Egypt? God or Moses? God or Moses? God. But look what was in their mind. Who was the one who brought up out of Egypt? Moses. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Look at this. The devil's strategy. When we make this God, that means that that God belongs to you. Why? Because he has your earrings. Because he has things that are belongs to you. And all the people break up and do that. And look what that. Verse number 5. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to who? To the Lord. Can you believe that? They call this God the Lord. In Spanish, they call it Yahuwah. In a few verses. And now look at this. And the law. Verse number 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get 
these down for what? For that people which what? Have corrupted themselves. Do you notice something weird here? God is telling Moses what? Your people. God is telling Moses, your people. And then look at this. <laughs> Verse number 8. They have turned outside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed their uncle and said, This be thy God, O Israel, which I have brought thee up into the land of Egypt. And then the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen these people, and I have, and I behold, it is what? What? Stick that people. Now therefore let me alone that my rod may wax hot against them, and that I may what? consume them. And I will make of who? Of thee a great nation. God was telling Moses, let me destroy them, and I will make you a great city or a great person. Let me ask you a question. If you were Moses, and he called you and said, okay, Moses, Brian, Ellie, Ruby, or put your name on it. I have seen the Metropolitan Church. They're really hard people. They don't stand in my work. They don't pray. I will destroy this church. What do you say to him? Maybe, maybe you will say, God, it's about time, God. <laughs> I've been in this church for 20 years and they've been the same. It's about time. Destroy them and let you and I walk together. Maybe. Right? As a human. All that metropolitan church. Oh, every Sabbath we preach. We have prayer meetings. We have 40 days of prayer. Nobody comes. Destroy them. <laughs> But I praise the Lord. Because when you walk with God, when you walk with Him, your life is not the same. And look what happened. Look what happened. And Moses, verse 11. He saw the Lord in his God and said, Lord, why doth thy what watch hot against thy people? Now you understand? God told Moses, your people, and Moses are telling now God, your people is a relationship. Let me put this this way. It's like when Haley and Hazel are, are not behaving, I tell my wife, look at your children. <laughs> and then when they are behaving, she said to me, look at your children. Do you understand? We have a relationship. So I tell her, that's your kids. That's your children. And she said the same thing to me. It's a relationship. God and Moses were walking together. And he was telling, God was telling Moses, your people. And Moses was saying, no, it's your people. It's your people. It's thy people. And look what Moses is saying here. Thy people, which thou have brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with mighty hand. And look, verse 12 at the end. Turn, turn from thy fierce work and repent for thy evil against thy people. So Moses was telling God, repent of what you're doing. Do not destroy them. He was interceding for his people. Let me ask you this. Was God right to destroy his people? Yes or no? Yes. Because they were sinning against God. But Moses was doing what? Praying and interceding for God's people. And what happened? God listened to Moses. Praise the Lord. So when you see somebody sitting in church, do not do not do do not say anything about them. Pray for them. Don't go to your best friend and talk about Brian and talk about uh, Pastor Buena and talk about Pastor Bias and talk about Sister Ruby and talk about no. You have to pray for them. Intercede for them. 
And I guarantee that if you are working with God, he will listen to you. Amen. The only way that the church will change is if we're praying for each other, Amen. interceding for each other, Amen. not talking about each other. And Moses did this, and look what happened. I praise the Lord. Verse 14. And the Lord what? Repented for of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Praise the Almighty God. He forgot his people. And if you see in verse 31, a Moses returned unto the Lord and said, All of these people have seen a great sin and have made them God of gold. Yet now, if I thou will forgive their sin, and if not, blood me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which ye have have written. Praise the Lord. Will you do that? Is Vanessa, oh Vanessa is a sinner. God, if you don't forgive the her, then take me away from the book. Will you do that? Hmm. Oh God, she's a sinner. Oh, well, you know what to do. Let's bring her to the board. I don't know. I mean, uh, Maria. Ooh, ooh, Edwin. Ooh. I don't know, Robert. But I praise the Lord because when you walk with Him, you intercede for His people. And Moses told this to, to God, and you know what happened? God said, and I said, verse 33, and the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever had sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. And now, there's something that happened here, and I want to say this quickly because I only have two minutes. God told Moses, I am going to forgive them. But you know what? I am not going with them. I am going with you. Do you understand? Moses was walking with God, and God said, I am not going with them because they are sinners. I am going to send my angel to go before them, but I am going with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know what, church? The reason why we start the year with the 40 days of prayer is not because it's an event. No. It's not to fill up the calendar. It's to start the year knowing and work walking with the Lord. Amen. And I praise God for these 40 days of prayer. Because we can set our mind that for 40 days we're going to be praying and fasting for Him. So church, this is a great experience. And I know that a few of you are doing this. And I would like to hear from you about your testimony. I know that for some of you, your life are, are not the same. It's not the same. Because if you're walking with him, your life cannot be the same. So if you have a testimony, I will give you a few minutes so you can stand up and bring this testimony to us to enrich our spiritual life. Who wants to be the first one? She's very good. I know that we have a, a wonderful prayer ministry in our church. And I know that every Sabbath I look forward to receiving from Brother Adi the list of uh, persons for me to pray with. And uh, I heard a sermon short, a few weeks ago on the radio. And the person speaking on the radio was talking about how we take prayer for granted. We forget that Christ paid the price for us to be able to communicate with God. And so sometimes for that reason, we don't take prayer seriously. And I know that uh, when Brother Adi asked for volunteers to, to be prayer intercessors, I know that I took it very seriously. And I, I make time throughout the day to pray for the people on my list. And these are people that I do not even know, mm -hmm. but I know that they have needs. Yes. And I know that this morning that I was blessed when Brother Hansel said that he had been praying for me this week. Because I, I don't know, some of you know that I have a very depressed immune system. And it's very hard for me to get over any simple illness. 
And so I had really been struggling. I've been in bed a lot the last three weeks, uh, just dealing with this terrible flu that I had. And it was a blessing to me this morning when he said that he was praying for me. And uh, I'm really comforted by that. And I, I hope that uh, someday in heaven that I will meet some of the people that I've been praying for. Amen. And that we can all rejoice in knowing that we support each other through prayer. Through prayer. Amen. 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 And there is something that I put here underneath. It says, praying to become rather than to receive. Amen. To become. Don't you think it's wonderful to be to walk with God? Wow. Wow. Any other person? Praise the Lord for this day. Wow, prayer. Like, um, my testimony helps to uh, understand and give the affirmation and recognition to the ministry, the gentle ministry of the Holy Spirit in giving a sinner a desire to pray. Because by ourselves, we don't want to spend time in prayer. But the Holy Spirit is the one who facilitates that. And my testimony is about the 10 days of prayer. Um, it's an experience that changed my prayer life. And I don't want to go to the details. My prayer life used to be a hollow shallow experience like the generic prayer that we pray lord bless me today and bless my family period but the 10 days of prayer for the last five years being involved in that changed my prayer life to the point jenny that i even sing during my prayers mm -hmm. you know those of you who know how the the united prayer goes i noticed something that i really enjoyed that time not a hurry Oh Lord, I'm in a hurry, I have to go to work and all this, but it's a lingering in His presence. And it changed the impact of the 10 days. It taught me that prayer is not just asking. You know, you spend time in praising God for a few minutes, and then you spend time confessing. And before I would say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. And now the Lord is pressing me, which one? You know, that I learned that confession is very specific in nature. And then to intercede, as Sister Anita said, and I don't feel worthy to intercede for others, but then Jesus is interceding for me at this point in time. It gives me courage and to spend time in thanking God for a lot of things. So it has evolved from generic praying to a more passionate uh, time that I linger in the presence of God and I learned from my spiritual mentor this before you see any face in the morning see the face of God and not that I don't want to see my husband's face but um, it has evolved to that that before anything I have to see God's face Amen. 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 that was so encouraging when I was like I fast and prayed we can, I love that. I love that. But just because I'm going to fast and pray for a few people. Sister Elia, Brother Joe, Sister Beth at his house, Sister... I mean, a few people. I cannot mention all the list. But I was praying for each one of them. And then, you know, I, I, I felt so good the first day. And I was having a, a, a good time walking with him. But I said, God, why don't we do this again? Tomorrow. So I was doing the next day. And I was asking him, are you going to fast again? He said, yes. And because I was having a good time with him, walking with him, singing, praying, you know. And then I did that, and, this, and the next day I was, I was more encouraged to do it the next day. And then I said, on the third day, I said, God, we probably don't need to stop a little bit because I need to do more time for other things. So, but it's good when you walk with him. It's like when you are in love with this person, you don't want this person to go away. That's why you get married, right? Mm -hmm. Because before you just go and visit, now you want to be with this person all the time. When you're near with God, you love to spend time with Him. Pray, sing, and study His Word. And uh, so this is that experience, a wonderful experience. Anybody else wants to give a testimony? Anybody else? For the 10 days of prayer, the food is great. Oh, yes. <coughs> I, I 
didn't want to stand up and say anything. I kind of want to hold it in, but my niece is pressure and she goes, say something. I will say um, that my prayer life has grown tremendously over the past years of joining Metropolitan, and I thank you all for praying for our family. I've, I've asked you several times to pray for either my niece or my mother or grandmother, and prayers are um, powerful, and we're living proof of that. So I, I thank you for those prayers, and <clears throat> I used to be uncomfortable praying, especially out loud in public, especially if I hear someone else, and I'm thinking, I don't pray like that at home. My prayers are not as elegant and so eloquently worded. And and I was expressing that to Cole one day, because anytime anyone asks me to say anything out loud, I'm like, you do it. <laughs> you, you do it. And then he just helped me to understand that <clears throat> our prayers are individuals. And God knows us, and he loves us as individuals, and he doesn't want me to pray like someone else, and he doesn't want my prayer to be a uh, carbon copy of someone else's. And he has, I mean, he has helped me with that so much. And I pray and I talk to him on a constant basis. I do a lot of driving with my job, and I am never lonely because I constantly, it's almost like he's sitting there with me because we just chit chat all day. And, and I, want to encourage people who may experience that or feel that discomfort in their prayer life or they feel like they, you know, may not pray properly. I don't know if there are rules, if they are, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what they are, but I want to encourage people to just speak to him as if you were, as if he's sitting right there next to you, um, especially for the young people. You know, ever feel uncomfortable praying? Just, just speak from your heart, which is most important, and and just be genuine with your with your prayers, and and they and he will hear you, and he does speak to you. He really does. It is wonderful. Like my Hazel, she's two now, and uh, we pray with her, and it's wonderful when she start when she play by herself. She had a kitchen set, and she put this and that, and then you see her pray. We don't know what she's saying, but she's praying. She said, Man, but she's praying. And when you come, because she wants you to play with her, she wants before you eat, or she she made for you, she wants you to pray. She said, pray. She said, it's good to see that. And and, and you know, and we need to be like the, like, like children, to be honest. Somebody else? Anybody else? Yes, without Prayer after the communion. It's a joy. With all the blessings that he has given, it's a sign to praise him. Especially when um, we are traveling, we see a lot of distractions around. But he had preserved our life. Mm -hmm. uh, this week, uh, my mom had been uh, on life support. After three days, she went home. And I told my sister, prayer is really powerful. Mm -hmm. I have been sick, as you know, for the last uh, few months. And I praise God because there are people who go by something that will give you relief and comfort. Mm -hmm. And sometimes at night I couldn't sleep, yet it is a joy because it's a time for prayer. <laughs> and I really thank God for the joy that He had given us uh, in prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer for me is that I feel that I I am with God every day for all the tribulations and trials that happen to our life. I think it learned that I don't need to give up or we don't need to give up because He's always with us. She you know that what happened to my son is really hard, but when he told me that he's gonna move to 
Colorado. I prayed so hard that I want him to continue to work with him, and the prayer really was answered. Then after that, I got another tribulation that my granddaughter was born with a premature, but now she's very healthy. And another problem that had in our family is that when my brother-in-law said that he had a stage four cancer, and now he is really very good. Where is he? <laughs> and now another problem that go with us is about my health. But every day as we um, study about him, every day that we give our relationship with him, everything will be overcome because he's always with us. As I learned, never, never give up, especially with our faith to him. Amen. Amen. I pray you to make you in your family really a thousand miles away. Amen. Amen. I pray every night for my son to come to church. Every little it means for him to get his job. I pray middle of night, that is your early morning here. And early morning in my place is your late afternoon here. Every night, every morning, in today. I mean, it's more part of financially, but I'm sure that God provided that financial. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. It's really easy to pray for, you know, people who are your family, your friends. And um, the past couple weeks, I've been dealing with someone who's not the easiest person to deal with. And I've been praying for myself that I won't feel any anger towards them or be upset with them. And I spoke to my coworker because I was just so frustrated during recess one day. And I was telling her about it and she said, well, have you prayed about it? And I said, yeah, I've prayed for myself that I, I won't be upset with them, I won't have a grudge. And she goes, no, 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 you need to pray for them. And I was like, oh, that's really hard. So I um, did pray for them. And then when I was teaching the next day during our worship, the story just so happened to be about a little girl who was upset with her friend. And she prayed for her friend. And then our Bible story that day was about loving your enemies. And I just wanted to thank God for sending people into my life and for the stories that he sends to my life to speak to me through those things to remind me, you know, it's not, I don't know, to remind me to always pray for others. And that's it. <laughs> amen. 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 I don't want to be me and send anybody. Yes. I want to test the money Five years old, and for some reason I was always scared to study the book of Revelation and prophecy. So I thank God to Ruby for giving a magazine a magazine to my sister. And for my devotion in the morning, I've started studying prophecy, and it's really amazing. And I'm also thankful that the 40 Days of Prayer book is about the end times. So that really ties in with my devotions. And now I find myself um, talking to God every day as if you were right next to me. Amen. And I never see that. So I'm thankful. Amen. 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 Something, but then I would like, it seems to me that the Holy Spirit is telling me to share my experience. I probably some of you that you know that I'm working with you at this hospital for almost one year and I doesn't have uh, I have a Friday work until nine o'clock something like that but then I've been praying for them somehow I will be off during Friday and Saturday and Sunday and just recently just December 3 I was granted the privilege to off on Friday. So you will notice that Friday I came over and then the Friday meeting. So I pray, praise God really for if you earnestly pray for something and ask, it may not be granted immediately, but then yes. time will come. Yes. And it's time He will grant you your request. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Anybody else? No? Then, um, you know, it's hard to make an appeal when it's
come to prayer because it's your decision. Nobody can force you to pray. Nobody can even, maybe the testimony of somebody else can motivate you to pray. But it has to come in your understanding to know that when you pray, when you walk with him, your life will change. You have more power. Not human power, but holy power. That will help you to go through many different things in your life. So I would like to ask them to, if you can play something, something I will just, it's not an appeal. But at least to call your attention that in these 40 days of prayer, if you have enjoyed the worldwide movement of prayer, that you will join us in these 40 days of prayer. Maybe you cannot come on the best first or prayer meeting because of your work schedule. That's okay. But at least if if your prayer life will change and you will spend more time with him praying with him, walking with him, that your co-workers, your family, and even the church will notice that you are different. That counts. Because I know, and I know for sure, that he is coming soon. I know that he is coming soon. And the time that we're living is, is difficult. And it requires faith. And it requires strength that only can come from God. So my appeal today, this afternoon, is do not give up. Do not give up. Maybe if you're praying one or two or three times and you don't see that it's happening what you're asking Him, don't give up. Depend on Him. Continue praying. I remember one day in one church that I was preaching and at the end I, I had the same testimony. That one youth lady was sitting next in the, next, in the left side of the church, stood up and said, I praise the Lord because I've been praying for my mom for 10 years. I am not going to give up because I know that God will answer my prayer. I praise the Lord because that same night, she didn't know. When one lady in the back stood up and said, I am that mother. I am here today. I am giving my life to Jesus Christ. I praise the Lord because both of them are now worshiping God and they serve God. Maybe you are praying for your son. You don't give up. Maybe you're praying for your daughter. Do not give up. Pray. Pray. Because He is listening. And He is working. You have to pray with faith. Maybe you cannot see it, but He is working. Maybe you're praying for your parents, for somebody, even in the Philippines, even in the other side of the earth. Continue praying. Pray for your spiritual condition. Pray for anything. But talk to Him. But most importantly, Walk with Him and be perfect. Walk with Him. Walk with Him. 80 years old, 60 years old, 70, doesn't matter. Walk with Him because He has many things for you. God is real. He is real. He is real. And He is listening. Maybe you cannot see the angels. The promise is that when two or three are together, He is here. And He is here. And when you pray, use your imagination and, and think that you are before Him, in front of Him, on His feet, and talking to Him. When you are driving, many people will say, this, guy, this man is crazy. Well, no, no, that's because you have Bluetooth and things like that. But talk to Him. Driving, talk to Him. At your work, talk to Him. If you are eating, talk to Him. Talk to Him. And pray the Lord for leaders in traffic. If you are stuck in traffic, talk to Him. If you are going through a difficult time in your work, talk to Him. If you are, ha if you are having difficulty with somebody, co-worker, somebody, pray for Him. Pray for Him. Pray for her. But let your spiritual life and your prayer life grow as each day goes on. Don't allow your head to be as a 20 years old and your body to be a 2 years old. Grow in proportion with Him. So if you are 80 years old, you can say, I've been walking with 
be for 83 years. Praise the Lord. And let God work in your life. Will you make a commitment today between you and God? It's not an appeal between you and God. But at least to encourage you to read and continue reading the 40 days of prayer and pray and continue praying and be part of this uh, prayer meeting on Wednesday and be part of this movement of prayer. This is the years of prayer. Pray in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. I mean, if you are here in church, take the advantage that you see your brothers and your sister here. And maybe call one of them and say, can you pray for me? Well, can we pray together? Well, let's pray. Let us pray for each other. Let us pray for each other. Can we stand up? And we are going to finish maybe a different way. I'm going to maybe ask for two people. want to pray for us today, raise your hand. I'm going to come here in the front and we're going to all pray together. Who wants to pray today? Raise it up. Close to me. One here. Please step in front. Who else? Somebody else? One will pray for Thanksgiving. And the other one will pray to intercede for each one of us. Right? And then I'm going to just finish with one prayer. This is really good. Yes. Thanksgiving, Brian. in Jesus. Lord, how can we repay you except we surrender our lives to you? We thank you especially for our leaders who has designated this year as year of prayer. And we thank you for the 40 days that has been all those sovereign you have given us encouragement to intentionally look at our prayer life and give us hope that when we earnestly want to spend time with you, you will give us the time and the desire. And we thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit that makes us really spiritually enjoy to be in your presence. And thank you as we end our worship that you promise, that you promise that when two or three are gathered in your name, you are in our midst. And I just want to especially thank you for Pastor Baisa. He didn't give up on the prayer meeting for years. And I want to thank you for those prayer warriors that come Wednesday, whether it's cold, raining, that comes here to intentionally pray for this church family. Lord, you know who they are, and may you give them the desire, the intentionality, and the passion to pray together. And in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Dear God, we continue our prayer today, and I just want to pray a special prayer for our congregation that's here today, the Sabbath day. We have heard your word, and we have made a commitment today to experience you, walk with you through prayer. Lord, my prayer uh, for this congregation is the same that you had when you were here on earth. When you prayed, interceding on our behalf, 
just as you and the Father are one, a Father, I pray that in our experience as a congregation, we will also be one with you. That is my prayer, dear God. And as we leave this place, may your Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, be evident in our lives, evidence that God lives inside our heart. So, Lord, for each and every person that is here, may we open our hearts to you as you knock into the doors of our hearts and let you come in. And dear Father, again, thank you for your blessings in a special way for this church, for this church family, whether those that are here today are guests or those that came here today are our own church family members. That again, dear Father, this year, this year will be a special year for us so that we can experience you more and more and deeper and deeper. And again, we thank you for this privilege you've given us to ask for this special prayer on behalf of our congregation. Father, also, as you know, we, as leaders, have decided to come into this four days of prayer to ask for your guidance. And I praise your name because the leaders have decided to wait until your revelation to what are we going to do this year for your people and also for our community. If you see outside, there's a sign that said that we are a community church. And we also need to work for our community. Help us to go and look and seek for those who are living in darkness so we can bring your light into their heart. And also help us to uh, bring joy and faith and, and, and experience to those who are coming every Sabbath, every day, every week to our church. And also, Father, help us to see your glory when you come soon and to live with you forever. I also want to pray for the potluck today that you, you bless the food and you will bless each part, each person who will go to participate. Thank you for being with us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.